Hello everyone, my name is Ron Tanner, and for this session we are going to talk about what's new on FamilySearch.org. We have supported originally only 10 languages, but now we're supporting 30 languages on FamilySearch.org. We hope that these languages will allow more people to be able to come to FamilySearch and find more information about their family. Now, because there are different languages, I wanted to show you how the languages work. If you set your browser to a specific language like Spanish, then we will show FamilySearch.org in the language of your browser. If we do not support your browser language, then we will default to English. Let's go take a look. So here I started FamilySearch.org but I had set my browser to Spanish. And so the default language for all of the areas, the menus and others are Spanish. Now, if this language that you have set for your browser, remember, is not in the set we support, then it will default to English. But regardless of the language it gives you, you can still go down to the bottom here and select the language picker and then choose any of the languages that are in the set that you would prefer at that moment. So I'll click English and I'll hit apply. And now we're seeing the English menu, even though my browser could be set to Spanish. I'd like to talk to you about our new ancestor discovery pages. Ancestor discovery pages have been around for a while. They are snapshots of deceased persons in the tree. We make them available to search engines such as Google or others to crawl and present when a search matches an ancestor. You can also go to ancestors.familysearch.org to see a directory. Let's take a look at what the previous ancestor discovery page looked like. This was my grand, great grandfather, or my grandfather, excuse me, William Allen Tanner. And here was his discovery page. It had information on how many photos and sources were on his page, a little bit of information about his birth and death, and maybe a source. And then you needed to click to get a free account in order to see more information about the ancestor. Well, now let's go look and see what these ancestor pages look like today. So over here, I go on my new tab and I enter in the name and birth and death of my grandfather, William Allen, because I'm searching for this ancestor. So I hit enter and it returns from Google, top choice, ancestors, familysearch.org, William Allen Tanner. I'll click on this to see the new discovery page. And here it is for William Allen Tanner. This looks a whole lot better than the other one did. And it gives you much more information. Name, date range, age when he died, place where he lived, a life summary of William Allen Tanner, his spouses and deceased, deceased spouses and children, and the meaning of his name. Here's the meaning of Tanner. I could click on William to see the meaning of William and Allen to see the meaning of Allen. We can see the sources that are attached to him. We can see more about his family and we can see some memories about him. We can also see, uh, click here to see about the homeland of Allen, William Allen Tanner and the traditional dress of that area and that time frame plus timelines of when children were born, world events. And the thing I like the best is you can click and look at some of these memories. This memory for me is the funniest one, and I just loved it. So let me click on that memory, tell you a little bit about it. This is uh, William Allen Tanner when he was a little child. Pro I don't know how old he was, probably about five or six. And in this day and age, when that picture was taken... The tradition was that whether you were male or female, you always had your picture done in a dress. It was considered more formal. Well, William Allen Tanner did not want 
to be wearing a dress. So he just frowned and fussed. And I remember him telling me that his parents told him to smile and he just refused because he hated to be taking a picture with a dress on. So I thought that was great. Now here was one of the last pictures I have of Grandpa Tanner. There he is there. So we could see some memories and so forth. We can also share this information with our friends here or down at the bottom of the page. You can share with Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp, and it'll send a little information about William Allen, and then your relatives could click on that particular link and come back and see this same Ancestor page. This doesn't require you to be logged in in order to see this page. Oh, also, I forgot, I wanted to also show you the Ancestors. You could also go to just Ancestors, excuse me, if I could type, ancestors.familysearch.org. And there you could see a directory of people. There they are, directory of people, and some information. And then you can click Browse Surname Directory. And then the way the directory is set up is you can look for uh, ancestors in particular times. So here I went to the T so I could see some maybe some other tanners here. Or others. I'll just pick one. I'll just pick something, anything. I'll just draw Raul here. And maybe Luis here. And there's Luis. And I can go see his ancestor page. And I can crawl around if he if he has see it has a spouse and children. And I can just click around to find out more about this ancestor. Next thing I would like to talk about is labels on persons you are following. Some of you may be following ancestors that used to be called watching, but now we moved it to following, which is more familiar. And when you're following an ancestor, you will get notified anytime somebody changes or adds to the data that is already in the tree. The problem is that some people end up with a good sized list. You know, most people have a small list, a few, but some people have thousands in their list. And sometimes it's hard to remember why it was important for you to be following this person. Well, you need, no longer need to worry about this with labels. Labels allow you to remember why you were following that particular ancestor. Okay, here we are on FamilySearch.org. Now I'll go to my following list. So we can take a look. So I'll scroll down here a little bit. Now here's a person, uh, one of my relatives, Henry Martin Tanner, that I would like to follow. I click the three dots and I can, un I can unfollow if I want to stop following him or I can add a label. I'll go ahead and click add a label. And we get some choices of kind of labels we may want to have, but I'm going to create a new one. And I'm going to write uh, watch for merging. And I'm going to create that label. Then I'm going to click on this and add a note as to what that label means for me. So for me, this is a watch for Henry Martin Tanner from being merged with his cousin, Henry Martin Tanner, who was born in the same year and died 10 days before Henry Martin Tanner. All righty, so I'm going to save that label. And now that label appears here whenever I come to my following list. I can have up to 10 labels. I can click watch for, I can click this merge, watch for merging and see what I had put in. I can edit it to change it if I need to or remove it. Okay, so just for kickers, I'll show you a little bit about Henry Martin and Martin Henry. So here's Henry Martin. He was born 11 June 1852, died the 21st of March 1935. 
Here's Martin Henry. He was born April 26, 1852, same year, and died 11 March 1935, 10 days before Henry. So let's just look. Henry was uh, born June 1852, Martin April 1852. Henry died 21st of March 1935, and Martin 11 March 1935. Talk about crazy. Well, as you can guess, it's potential that the system will try to tell people that these two are the same persons because they have the same kind of names and the dates are very close. So that's why I put in the following to make sure that nobody attempts to merge those two together and, uh, and we lose one of our cousins. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the help dropdown. We have had help on each of the pages for a while, but the problem is that they get in the way or have articles that are not relevant. The team has been working to get relevant articles on proper pages, and now you can move that help dropdown out of your way. Let's go take a look. So here I am on my following page. Let's go uh, look at help. So this is help right here. And you just click on that button. And what will show up is a help page. And on that help page, it'll tell things that are relevant for this page that you're on. How can I prevent others from making inaccurate changes? How do I organize and label ancestors in my following list on family tree? And uh, how do I view the records, so, so forth? How do I unfollow a person from family tree? So it's very relevant to this page. If I go to a different page, let's go to the home page here. And on my home page, I'm gonna click the help. And I get a help page here, and but I get different things. What features are on my home page? How do I change my username and password? How do I remove a photo or person from my home page? So, and because uh, another thing is this help is movable, so I can just grab it with my mouse, move it around so it stays out of my way. I can uh, make it bigger. Maybe I click how to change my password. And so now I can read it better and I can uh, move it out of the way if I need to, to be able to do the work that I need to do to follow these instructions. And of course I can close it if I'm done. Next thing I'd like to talk about is search alternate names. We've added the ability to search more than one name in historical record search. This is a great way to go find maybe a married and a maiden name or be able to uh, flip the names in maybe Spanish names to see if records were in different orders. And you can find out more information about this uh, as there's another presentation uh, in the booth, uh, family search booth, to give you more information. But let's go take a look at how this works. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to search historical records. And uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to enter information about my grandmother, Mildred Nations. And uh, this is her married last name, so Mildred Nations. But she also, you know, had a maiden name. So I'm going to enter in a maiden name. And it was Martin, Mildred Martin. And she was born in Benson, Arizona. And I'll do a search here. So here she is, Mildred Martin Nations and her husband and her children. And if I, as I look down a little bit, I see um, Mildred uh, Nations with Harry again and Mildred Nations with her husband and children. And then here she is, uh, here she is with her father and her mother and her siblings. So here I was able to find both information. Here she again, again here with her father, mother, and one of her siblings in another census. So with one, in, with a couple of entry of alternate names, we were able to find both records for her married names and her unmarried names, her, her childhood name. That's a great way to find more additional information. I'd like to talk a little bit about private memories. We now have private memories. 
before uh, everyone, all memories have been public. And there have been some people that have told us that they're not interested in uploading certain memories unless they're private. They're, they're ready to give, us to give them to us at a later date, but they don't want to allow everyone to see it at this moment. So we don't want you to lose those memories and have them damaged and destroyed. So we prefer to have you upload them to FamilySearch.org where we can preserve them and then mark them private so that others can't see it. So when you select a memory, one or more memories, and make them private, this means that only you can see that memory in the system. Okay? So let's go take a look at one of those. So let's go over here. We'll go to Memories, my gallery. And as you can see, I have some memories already private. So it shows up as here with a little lock on it that says these are private memories. If I wanna, if I wanna change it to, to public, I just click the memory. And then up here at the top right hand corner, I can choose to make it public or private. I'll make this public. Okay, and then I go back to my gallery and there it shows as public now. So let's make this one, this is my grandmother and grandfather. Let's go ahead and make this one private. So when I go here, and I go to here and I make it private. So this says making this memory private will make it only visible to you. You can click here to learn more about how that works. You make it private. And then, and then I'm going to jump over here to William Allen, just real quick. I'll go over here and take Henry Martin and put his name, this here. We'll go over to William Allen. So here's William Allen, and I'll go to Memories. Now, notice that on this memory, it's marked Private. And I see that because I'm the person that owns this memory, and I'm the one who made it private. So everybody else would only see these four pictures, where I'll also see this picture. Join me in another class to learn more about features that are coming to FamilySearch.org. Class name is What's Coming on FamilySearch.org. Thank you. And I appreciate you listening. I hope that there was some information that you got from this small presentation that will help you. And I want you to have a great Roots Tech Connect.